to survive in the Premier League or a Dutch diamond that has yet to be unlocked tactically. Just how good is Urien? Timber. Big crowd at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Timber is tenacious in his ground tackling and you can see why he wins such a large percentage of his defensive duels. He's very clean in terms of his challenging, fantastic timing in his tackles and he spreads himself well. He looks bigger than what he is. He gives off an aggressive vibe, yet it looks controlled. He prefers to go with the outside hook in terms of his chosen choice of slide tackle. But that's besides the point. What's important here is that Timber is a player that's a natural, clean ball winner amidst chaotic situations. And you can see why he's thrived at centre-back in a league such as the Eredivisie where a lot of the football is along the ground. He deals with technically able players very well, especially in the final third. I can even see this type of tackling style that he's got being quite important in the midfield region. Someone that anticipates where the pattern of play is going to unfold and goes in there a bit like a Kante and wins that ball in the heart of the midfield battle. Engels comes well langs Alvarez, but raakt the ball quiet by Timber. There's been much discussion as to whether Timber is a defensive liability and in truth I think it's harsh. I think he's quite an aware defender for his age. He looks around, you can see his head movements to see whether there's danger in behind him or to the side of him. He's often Ajax's deepest defender at times and when he is, he sweeps well, uses his recovery pace well and he anticipates how the play is going to unfold. He can be pretty front foot and against quick able players he does get caught out at times but it takes a really good player to sort of wrong foot him and make him look stupid generally i'd say he's pretty solid positionally for his age understands tactical instructions quite well so not someone i would completely write off in terms of being able to put in a defensive shift timber gets there before to be cast massive outsiders on the final day timber makes his way into the penalty area Timber is pretty agile in tight spaces. He can turn on a sixpence and at times he slaloms through challenges. Now that makes him pretty press resistant in general, but I'd say in truth, he looks more comfortable when he's dribbling in the opponent's half than when he does in his own. In his own, he can be a bit pragmatic and doesn't really progress the game, whereas Lissandro Martinez looks very fearless even inside his own defensive third and takes more risks with his dribbling. Now, another notable aspect of Timber's ball carrying is that he's not really effective in 1v1 dribbling situations out on the flank. He's not a Hakimi who's going to burst past his marker like a winger from a standing start. So in order to maximise Timber's dribbling ability, he has to almost join the game at the right time in the right areas of the pitch. He's not someone I'd want as a wingback going one-on-one -on -one trying to break the opposition down. Timber spilled to Sanchez out. Bessie. Time he's uh, not made by Dooney. When Timber does drift out into wider areas, his crossing is pretty solid. Cutbacks stink to the far post at backwards angles. I'd say those are his strengths due to his low center of gravity. It feels like he's almost digging into the ground to get elevation on passes that just don't seem possible. It looks like he's running out of play and he somehow finds these passes. In contrast, his whipped crosses from that Trent Alexander Arnold position, that David Beckham position, don't look as elite. They're not awful by any means, but they look hit and hope. He's not picking out a man and anticipating whether or not they're going to be intercepted. Overall, I wouldn't say it is a weapon that's so valuable that Timber simply has to be deployed out wide, but neither is it a liability that precludes him from playing in a wider role. Oh, no grief, Anthony Buitenkantje. Will he get We now move on to one of Timber's biggest weaknesses, his heading. Too often is Timber out-muscled and out-jumped in aerial situations. He's 5'9", 5'10", in height, which is similar to Alessandro Martinez, but there's a big difference in terms of their attitude, the timing of their aerial contact, and their general stockiness. Alessandro, despite being diminutive in nature, backs himself against larger men. He reminds me of Wolkanovsky, where they feel larger than life, powerful. Timber feels flimsy in comparison. What is particularly concerning is that statistically, he's only winning one in two aerial duels in the Eredivisie. So imagine coming to the Premier League where he's going to be up against guys like Haaland, Tony. So there's going to be very stern tests from an aerial perspective. So for me, this attribute 
alone writes him off as a starting 11 back four centre back for a title winning side in the EPL. Not too bad, Blake. An awful lot of good sides over the course of this campaign. They're in really good form. 93% possession accuracy, and I'm not surprised. Timber's someone who's very highly intelligent on the ball, he's very nimble. So in terms of trying to press him and force him into a mistake, it's going to be very difficult. One criticism I have of Timber is that he's not as proactive as Alessandro Martinez in terms of progressing the game from the back. Too often, as soon as he's attracted that press, he's more than happy to just pass on responsibility to the goalkeeper or his, you know, his partner at centre back. And I'd like to see him dribble out from the back a bit more so attract that pressure and then beat that man and then progress the game more because he's so talented in terms of how agile he is with that ball he needs to show more authority in possession I feel like at the moment he's playing within himself when he's trying to play out from the back so that's something I hope comes out more as he progresses and matures in his career Now, whilst I criticise Timber for his almost feeble nature in the build-up play, being a bit too pragmatic, being a bit too conservative with his passing, I think once he's broken out of the final third, it's a different Timber. He's suddenly very head up, very creative, looking to break lines and You can tell from the stats as well, his progressive passes, almost 10 a game. So someone who's comfortable in spotting where there's gaps, where there's runs being made. And I feel like he's almost wasted at centre-back because he's connecting passes into the forward's feet. He times his passes into the space for wider players to run onto. His technique is pretty simple, but he's got a nice solid weight of pass. And I feel like if he could find a bespoke role where he runs through into midfield areas, I think he could be pretty impactful with his passing. Timber. Ball that you have door from Timber is op maat. Julian Timber. Gorgeous ball. Ajax are in here. Timber, daar gaat Berghuis. Timber heeft het gezien. Berghuis net niet. Timber looks for Brobby. Timber's long passing is not special. For a centre-back, it's okay. It kind of does the job. He can at times lift the ball into the path of a target centre-forward to bring it down. He switches a play again, rather loopy, but generally they tend to do the job. The only concern I have for Timber is that if he does want a future away from playing in defence, he would need to show a greater air of comfort a more class in his long pass technique for it to be a viable move. In terms of his short passing, his press resistance, his dribbling, he looks like he could play the midfield role. But it's the long passing for me where he looks like he has the technique of a centre-back and not even a top-class ball-playing centre-back, but a centre-back. And that's not going to be good enough if he wants to make that move into the midfield. Hit the heights and found his best form again after a start to the season delayed by injury. His latest spell on the sidelines. Berghaus spends the, uh, the free kick in threateningly. Unsurprisingly, for a defender who's operated at centre back for 70% of his games in the previous season, you know, Timber's not going to be scoring many goals. However, the XG does suggest that this is a player who, when he does make that move into the box, he makes himself a threat. He's quite agile, he's got a deft touch, he's someone that understands the momentum of an attack quite well good at passing and moving and then making those timed runs into the box so I can definitely see if he does play in a midfield role where he's got a bit more freedom to get into the box I can see his goal scoring numbers improving in terms of his technique I think from range he needs to get over the ball a bit more he does sky his shots a fair bit but definitely there's something to work with here because his understanding of the final third is a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for He is quite impactful from, say, set pieces, not just from in the air, but just getting to 50-50 situations where the ball's been knocked on. And because he's quite a reactive player in the final third inside the box, he does grab a fair few amount of goals. 
So overall an area of growth for timber. Tactically, IACs play variations of the 433, including the 4141 and the 4231. Timber operates predominantly as a centre-back who at times is the deepest player in IAX's backline and at times is bombing forward with freedom down the right half space and he's afforded a lot of tactical freedom within IAX. The big question is then, how scalable is this at the highest level? For me, Timber can't be a centre-back with that level of freedom at Champions League level winning club due to his lack of aerial ability. So can he be a right back? I'd say as an orthodox right back, he has similar limitations to a Kunde. He can't really cross the ball to an elite level. He can't really beat a man one-on-one -on -one in an attacking situation. So that limits him going forwards. As a pure defensive right back like a Kyle Walker or Juan Bissaka, he could do a job provided that the winger ahead of him is taking care of everything by himself in an attacking sense. Now, what does he bring to that role? He's got good pace, positionally quite sound, and a fantastic tackler with good agility. My only issue is that possession-wise, it would limit him a lot because his best possession moments come inside the pitch, not out on the flank. Now, it sounds silly, but most players have an area of the pitch where they just look more comfortable. They have an innate understanding of how to receive the ball, what angles to make with their passes. For me, Timber doesn't look super comfortable when he's out receiving the ball in a right back position. Now the other suggestion is the John Stones role again very similar to what he kind of does at Ajax which is a centre back who has the freedom to roam around and almost come into midfield at times but what I would say is that what Stones does is that when he's a centre back in a back four he's got the heading ability to not be a liability at the very highest level and then when he moves into midfield he's someone who's got better pause on the ball better controlling of the tempo so he doesn't really look out of place in a deeper lying role in midfield so John Stones overall is just a better specimen and presence both in the back four and in the midfield than what Timber could bring so where does Timber potentially fit so for me his best position potentially if we're talking at the highest level would be in a bespoke role where it's almost like the right side of a midfield diamond now imagine it's a 3-4-3 free free setup or even a 4-4-2 diamond I think that's where he could be like a Kante-esque type player where he's a ball winner very press resistant very nimble and let's just say that the right back in a back four pushes forward he could drop back into that right back slot or even in the 3-4-3 three, three, he could slot back and make it into a back four or if that wider centre back moves out to confront a winger Timber could then slot into the back four but he's not expected to always be there it's almost a bonus on top of his midfield role in that right-sided channel and I think that would really push his game to the highest level because I don't see him as a centre-back being world-class I think as a defensive right-back I think again world-class seems like a very very high level of expectation for him I think he can definitely be competent I think he could definitely be Champions League level for sure but if we're looking for him to become a world-class player I think something new has to happen to him tactically for it to happen in conclusion, Timber is a player who's highly intriguing. I don't think he has world-class attributes in defence, but I think in a more bespoke role, he could potentially become a world-class footballer, but it, it needs a lot of thinking about what sort of attributes he brings to the table. We know he's very agile and a good dribbler when he's inside the pitch, but not as powerful on the wing. He's someone who's quite intelligent on the ball. When he's in the opposition third, he's very progressive. And in his own third, he can be pretty pragmatic. But he's not a player who's going to lose the ball easily. He's a tremendous ball winner. He's positionally quite sound. He's an aggressive ball winner, a very clean tackler. So he's got a lot of interesting attributes. So it's all about just trying to find the right position for him. And he could potentially make an impact even at the highest level. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe. And see you guys again next time. Bye.